now that the oil pump is installed, we can install the pickup tube. And in order to do that, we're also going to install the windage tray, but it's kind of snowballing further. I got a new oil pan because this going in the Bel Air, that truck oil pan was way too low. So I got one of these cheapy oil pans just because trying to be on a budget, tax return wasn't so good this year. Although I did get a stimulus. What did I spend that on? This oil pan was actually reviewed by a lot of people. You can find videos online. I'll put the part number in the description. And it actually got really positive reviews. And unboxing this thing, I can tell it's cheaper. Some of the machining's not quite as good as the more expensive ones, but for or more than a hundred dollars less as long as it's flat and it seals and it holds oil at the end of the day it's an oil pan this one i got actually has the ports on the side for the return oil lines from the turbo this thing comes with pretty much all your hardware you got this block off plate right here this would be for your cooler lines if you're running an oil cooler and then this is the oil filter adapter and then these two plugs right here are going to go on the side this is where you would run your return line for your turbos some, some nice new oil pan bolts. This is your drain bolt. And then the O-rings for your pickup tube. And then these bolts here, I think are for your windage tray. Some of the more expensive ones do not come with a gasket, which is kind of nice. This one actually comes with a gasket. Being a shallow oil pan, I am going to have to modify the windage tray. Fortunately, Chevy helps us out and stamped rear on this thing so we know what direction to put it. Thank you, Chevy. Yeah, it's hitting up here in the front which is to be expected because this section here is quite a bit more shallow than back here. It's just a lower section, which as you can tell is right behind the second bolt right here. So I need to probably take off about an inch behind that second bolt right there and just kind of come straight across with it. So probably right about where these are straight across. But I kind of want to keep these holes here because if I cut it here and I cut these off, then we got this much here kind of flopping around. So this will make it more secure if I keep these bolt holes here. So cut right where that dimple line is, come down here, go around this way in front of the bolt. I mean, I think, right? Let's try that. So I chopped off the front part, but you see I kept those bolt holes there. Let's try this again. I think we're good. Doesn't seem to be hitting now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we're good. So I'll just clean up these edges and then we can install the windage tray and the pickup tube. And these nuts are stop nuts, so no need for Loctite or anything on them. I also thoroughly cleaned the pickup tube. I sprayed a bunch of brake cleaner down in it, sloshed it around, blew it out with my air hose, especially the screen. You wanna get all the china off of them. And anytime you put anything with an O-ring into anything, you wanna make sure that you lube it up. So we're just gonna put some engine oil on this O-ring. There we go. These bolts do have locking things on the flange here, but I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little drop of Loctite on here just to make sure this does not come loose. Boot and tight. Before we install the front cover and the rear cover, we need to install a new gasket. You wanna rub a little bit of oil around the outside of the gasket and the lip of your front cover to help it go in and seal a little bit better. However, you do not wanna put oil on the inside of the gasket. They want these to be installed dry. To install the gasket, you're gonna use a rubber mallet with just some light taps. You don't wanna damage that gasket. And you're gonna use your old gasket to hammer on to protect the new gasket. Working your way around until it's all the way seated, flush with the cover. You wanna check the inside as well to make sure there's no gap between the gasket and the cover. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the rear gasket. Again, we're gonna apply a thin film of oil on the outside of the gasket and on the cover. I'm gonna leave this plastic piece in for now just to keep the gasket from bending out of shape. Not sure you really need it, but just because. Then using your old gasket, tap the new one until it's all the way seated. So before we put the rear cover on, we have to install our barbell. And we gotta make sure that this one goes all the way in there, all the way seated. So we'll get a little bit of oil in the hole here, just to kind of give it a little bit more lubricity. And then I'm gonna dip the barbell actually in my oil container. To make sure both O-rings are good and coated. I'll work it into the hole. It should be a really tight fit because these are really tight tolerances. Just like that, that is installed. One last time, we're gonna clean all of these surfaces. So you wanna clean anywhere the gasket's gonna go. You wanna clean around the crank where the rubber seal's gonna go. Don't forget to clean the cover as well. 
And once you feel good about how clean it is, now we can install the rear cover and the gasket. And the gasket only goes one way. It's pretty impossible to screw it up. And just kind of get a couple of bolts started. And you only want these bolts hand tight because we need to align this rear cover before we tighten it all down. So we'll install all 80 of these bolts and then we'll align it. They make special tools to align both the front and the rear cover. I actually have one. This just has to be installed in there and it has to be able to spin free. But I'm going to show you another way to do it if you don't have a special tool. All you need to do is make sure that this cover is flat with the surface of your block on both sides. And then you can use your feeler gauge to make sure that you don't have more than 20 thousand, which actually is quite a bit. So just make sure you trust your straight edge. I've got this really old level here that I know is 100% straight. They don't make them like this anymore. I'll lift up on this side just a little bit. So if 20 thou is the tolerance, I'm gonna go half that. I'm gonna go 10 thou, and I can't even get that in there. So I'm gonna just tighten that bolt a little bit. Keep this side moving. We'll do the same for the other side over here. That actually looks really good. Maybe just a hair on the high side. I have to, it's pretty good. I just tightened down a couple of these bolts just to make sure it doesn't move. I'm gonna come back and torque it later because I can't actually get a torque wrench in there with this thing on the stand. But that's gonna have to wait until tomorrow because it's getting late and I'm tired and I'm hungry. Its heads are falling off. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and finish this bad boy up. Now we'll install the front cover and to help us center it, we're actually gonna install the harmonic balancer as well. So we'll clean the mating surfaces where the gasket goes. Just make sure we get a good tight seal. Also clean the front cover. And once again, this can only go one direction. So it's pretty hard to screw it up. And since these have rubber gaskets on the holes as well, I like to put a couple of bolts in there to hold the gasket in place. So now those will stay on there while we put this on the block. These are not even hand tight. You can still move it around because you want that to be able to move around when you put the harmonic balancer in there. And just to kind of help it go on there a little easier, I am going to add a little tiny bit of penetrating fluid to the inside of the balancer. But again, according to the book, you want to install these dry. Just double check that and make sure. There's a few tricks to installing this harmonic dampener. They make an actual harmonic dampener install tool, but I don't have one, so I'm gonna show you another trick. You can use your bolt to kind of spin it on there, but your original bolt is not long enough. If you use your original bolt, you're only gonna start just with a couple of threads, and if you try to torque it on there too much, you run the risk of stripping out those threads inside your crank. So you gotta pick yourself up a bolt that's the same threads, but a little bit longer. I've got this bolt that I ordered from Fastenal. It's an M16 by 2.0 by 120 millimeters. With this longer bolt, you get a lot more threads into the hole and there is way less of a risk to stripping those threads. You also wanna put a couple of washers on the bolt to kind of help it spin. And if you wanna just put a dab of motor oil or whatever, some kind of lubricity, but really the washers are enough to help it spin. Now obviously before we start cranking on this thing, we're gonna support the front of the motor and then you're gonna to wanna to stop your fly wheel from turning. So I'm going to install the flywheel, put the pry bar back in there. And then once your crank is on as far as that longer bolt will go and you bottom it out, then you can take that one off and then install your old bolt to install the dampener the rest of the way. So once you got the balancer on the crank as far as it'll go, you're gonna torque your old crank bolt to 240 foot-pounds. That's right, 240 foot-pounds is a lot. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> I don't weigh 240 foot-pounds. One bad thing about this is you gotta have a massive bar if you wanna use a cheater bar, and then I'm kinda nervous about this plastic handle. I got it, 240 foot pounds, that was a lot. So now we have to remove it. We remember how much fun that was during disassembly. Ah, yeah, 240 foot pounds. Yeah, yeah. So now we'll check where that snout is. We're looking at how far recessed the snout of the crank is. It can be no more than 0.175 inches. So we got our gauge here. Stick it on there just like that. 
So we're at 150, which is within tolerance. So we're good. So now we can install the new crank bolt. And these new crank bolts already have a sealer on it, so no need for Loctite. So once again, this one gets 37 foot-pounds and then 140 degrees. Whew. So this can still move a little bit, but it's way better because now the dampener is actually helping us center this out. I'm gonna put the rest of the bolts in hand tight and then we'll do the same thing with the straight edge. That looks really good. So now we'll torque all these bolts to 18 foot-pounds. So now I'm gonna pull this flywheel off of here and then actually take the engine off of the engine stand so I can torque all of these bolts on the back cover. We'll do one more check to make sure the front cover and the rear cover didn't move on us and then we'll add some RTV. So once again, we'll clean this surface. We're just gonna put some RTV to kind of fill in the gap where the covers meet the block in all four corners. And while that's getting tacky, we'll go set up our oil pan. First, we're gonna install the baffle. These ones have the knurled flanges on it. We're also gonna put some Loctite on there, just because, why not? Click, 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 click. And we'll install this coolant block off and the gasket. Once again, adding some Loctite. Click, click. Click. Again, we're gonna apply this Permatex thread sealer to these plugs. So this is the adapter that goes for the oil filter. It's got a small end and a big end. The big end doesn't fit into the oil pan, but the small end does. But the big end of it doesn't fit the oil filter. So you need an adapter that's small on both sides. So what you gotta do is throw this away and go rob the original one off of the factory oil pan and install it in this oil pan because it's small on both sides. Now this one comes out with a 13 millimeter Allen socket wrench, Allen deal. If you don't have one of those, what you can do is you can get a bolt that matches the 13 millimeter. That actually fits in there perfectly. And then put yourself a nut on there and now you got yourself 13 millimeter Allen thing. So we'll put this part in the oil pan. I'm gonna put a little drop of Loctite on there. Just a wee little bit. <clears throat> Just like that. And now our oil filter will fit on here. Ta-da! Woo! So just like the front and the rear cover, this gasket also has the rubber where the holes are. So you can put some bolts through there and it'll hold the gasket in place. Hypothetically, of course this thing is made in China. And you're not staying in there. Of course. Well, let's just get it on there then. We'll get these all kind of hand tight for now and then we'll torque them down. And all the bolts get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Wait a minute. I'm sensing a theme here. And then the two longer bolts for the rear cover get torqued to 106 inch pounds. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. Before we tighten these bolts, we gotta make sure that the pan is flush with the block because on these engines, these oil pans are actually structural. Your transmission actually bolts up to it. So it's gotta be flush with the back of your block. And depending on what engine you have, there's a tolerance of 10 thousandths of an inch or 4 thousandths of an inch. You really wanna just get it as flush as possible. So once again, we'll grab our straight edge, we'll line it up, we'll look for any daylight, we'll use our feeler gauge, and once we're satisfied with it, we can start tightening these bolts down. Now the 10 won't go in there. So I think that's good. I'm gonna call that good. For really no particular reason, I like to go from the middle, kind of crisscross and working my way out. No reason, just kind of OCD. Hey look, a short block. It's starting to look like an engine. But we're missing one critical component, the heads. We're gonna do some head work, but that's gonna have to wait till the next time. So thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe. Share with your friends if this helped you out. Give it a big old thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.